This is how you got that one cousin with green eyes and red hair. Great, great grandma did it with the milkman. This is a purple avocado. This is a giant avocado. And this is an avocado with skin so thin, you could bite right through it like an apple. How do avocado farmers keep coming up with these new and delicious varieties of avocado? It is very difficult to selectively breed two varieties of avocado together to create a combination of their attributes. Precisely because avocados are highly heterozygous. Heterozygous means this seed carries DNA information that comes from all of its ancestors, all the previous generations. This is how you got that one cousin with green eyes and red hair. Great, great grandma did it with the milkman. Which means that all the varieties we grow, for example, this Monroe right here behind me, or this delicious Brogdon that I can't stop eating, came into existence in one of two ways. They were either the result of a program of planting hundreds or even thousands of seeds and selecting only the best. That's where this purple Lara variety came from. Or they were accidental discoveries. A little bit of trivia, the popular Hass, that little wrinkly avocado you get at the supermarket, that's the result of an accident. Rudolf Haas planted a bunch of trees in his yard and he grafted the Fuerte variety onto each of the seedlings. One of the seedlings, the graft failed, but he allowed the tree to continue growing. So all the other trees he planted were Fuerte variety, but this one was just a rogue seedling and it gave these odd looking little black, dark green avocados. His daughter loved them so much that when he went to cut the tree down, she begged him not to. And little by little, people started tasting that avocado. It caught on, it became a huge seller. And now there are over 4 billion of those little Hass avocados consumed every year around the world. Well, this guy here, this is called the Atme. This is also an accident. Right now, there is only one tree in the world growing this variety of avocado. And it would be in my sight line if there wasn't a big tree in the way right now. But this tree grows about a half a mile south of where I'm standing right now in a university tropical research center. And the reason I say this was grown accidentally is because just like the Hass is the result of a failed Fuerte graft, this variety is the result of a failed Oro Negro graft which is the variety of this tree right here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Because seed grown trees are so unpredictable. Remember, we talked about the fact that avocados are heterozygous. We use a technique called grafting, where we fuse a cutting from a known variety that already gives us good fruit to a seed grown seedling. But we don't let that seed grown seedling grow to maturity. And if you see here, you'll see a wide portion of stump and a little scar right here. That's when this was like a little narrow little seedling, like the width of a pencil or a cigarette. We spliced in a cutting from an already mature Oro Negro tree into that little seedling. They fuse together and they grow into a mature tree. But every now and then the graft fails and new growth will shoot out from the rootstock. Normally, if the graft fails in one of our young trees, we're of course gonna notice. Either I or some of my workers are gonna spot that the graft failed, and we'll come out and prep the tree and regraft a variety onto it. But over there at the research center, they've got thousands of trees they've been collecting for decades. Nobody noticed. Nobody noticed that the graft died and that the natural seed-grown tree continued to grow until last year. And the way they noticed was that same guy, Julian Lara, who created that purple avocado, was touring the facility and he happened to notice a ripe avocado on the ground during the month of April. That's an anomaly for us out here. We don't have any full grown ripe avocados during the month of April. Up until Julian discovering this fruit, our earliest variety was Donnie, which starts late May, early June. And like any self-respecting member of the tropical fruit community would do, Julian whipped out his knife and cut himself a slice. He took a bite and knew immediately that he had found a winner. And that's how the Atme variety has come to be.
Are you gonna see these in stores anytime soon? No, because there's only one tree in the world growing this variety and it's right here across the street. And since then, Julian has taken some clippings and grafted a few and he's got a waiting list that goes out years. Hell, I'm an insider and I won't even have this growing in my farm for probably five or six more years. Now, back to the layer of purple. And when I say this avocado is purple, I don't mean it's purple-ish or looks purple in the right light. This thing is purple. And as I told you a second ago, this one was not found by chance. This one was deliberately grown and selected using a technique called seedling hunting, where you plant hundreds of seedlings and you hope that maybe by the end of the decade, you'll have found one or two varieties of a fruit, in this case, avocado, that are good producers and taste delicious. One of the things I love about the Lara Purple is the skin just comes right off. And you get these beautiful creamy spears. And like the Apme, hmm, it tastes delicious. It's got a nutty flavor that reminds me of the Simmons. It's just a little more creamy and buttery. And like the Atme, you won't find the Lara Purple in stores anytime soon because, again, it takes forever to bring these to market. Imagine 10 or 10 plus years just to get the first fruit. I planted this tree from seed nine years ago. It hasn't even flowered yet. I planted his buddy right here on the same day, nine seasons ago. This year, he gave me a very weak flowering and one piece of fruit. Even if that little avocado up there tastes delicious, even if it blows my mind, then I gotta go a few more years to understand the growing characteristics of the tree. Then, if it turns out to be a viable variety, I name it, maybe I call it the sleepy lizard avocado. Then we take cuttings from these trees, graft them onto little seedlings, which will take then three and four years before they are producing fruit. Maybe you'll have 20 more trees at that point. We're already 16, 17 years down the line. Then we take cuttings from those trees, we produce even more, and finally, somewhere around the 20 year mark, we have introduced a new avocado to the avocado market. In this business, it takes 20 years to succeed. Hell, it takes a dozen years just to fail. But when you finally try one of these new varieties, it makes it all worth it. For many of you, learning that there are different varieties of avocado may have been today's discovery. We discussed heterozygony, the scientific reason that there is so much genetic variance from one avocado cultivar to another. I told you how avocado farmers create new varieties by either luckily discovering them or deliberately planting thousands of seeds and selecting only the best. I showed you my two seedling experiences, which statistically speaking are probably not gonna yield the next great avocado variety and gave you some insight into how long it takes. I mean, if we start growing seedlings in our 50s and 60s, it's our children who are gonna find the good varieties in the next generation. A Greek proverb comes to mind, something about great men planting trees under whose shade they'll never sit. I think I've shown today how big of an investment in time, effort, and land resources it is to come up with new avocado cultivars, which also explains why we farmers do not plant our trees from seed. And if you would like to taste some of the varieties we grow here at Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm, go to guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. Now, my wife loves the Atme, and I've been dying for her to taste the Brogdon. But if I don't get inside quick, I'm gonna eat this up and there'll be nothing left. While I go inside to share these avocados with my wife, you go to guacfarm.com, and I will see you on the next video.